Hey, today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys uh, all about valve stems and what I know about valve stems. Now this is my personal opinion, so some of you guys might have other opinions or you might just know more about valve stems in general than me, but this is for someone that is interested about learning valve stems that has almost no knowledge to valve stems. Um, I'm gonna be sharing with you a couple types of valve stems. Actually, there's three that I see usually on a day-to-day -day basis. So hopefully I'll get through this and quickly and won't take too much of your time. And hopefully you watch the whole video. Please subscribe. Uh, I enjoy making these videos. I do a lot of how-tos and just like helping people out. So uh, yeah, it's fun for me. But let's get right into it. This is a common valve stem. This is a automobile valve stem. It's used in lawn mowers and other things like that. You'll find them in, you know, anything that's low. These are a low pressure. They start with TR, which both of these do, but this particular valve stem is a TR 414. And they start out, I believe, in like TR 412 and TR, they go up to TR 15, maybe even more. All it does is at the 12s, they start out short and the 15s get long. Um, so this is a 14, I think it's a good in-between. It gives you enough, you know, width away or length away from the rim that you're not too close to the rim, especially when airing it up, stuff like that. But these valve stems are low pressure, what I call low pressure. They're the most common valve stem. <clears throat> the, you can't exceed 65 PSI on these. So a lot of, you'll see these in like a lot of smaller trailers, uh, cars, light trucks, stuff of that nature. And the reason why these are considered light duty is because this is all constructed out of rubber on the end. So it's all squishy here. And what happens is it pulls through and seals onto the rim. And that's what, that's what holds um, tight. It, it just, it expands in that rim. You usually soak these up and just tug it through. I have a tool that I just pull these through and that gives you a good seal around that hole, that opening. And um, yeah, so you want to keep these, these, this is a TR 14 and you want to keep it to light duty. You don't ever want to exceed 65. And the way you can tell is by looking at your tire. So it, say you went to a tire shop and you think they put the wrong valve stems in, this is a good video on, on how to know what is what. So I see the, again, I see these in trailers and light duty cars and pickups and just look at your tire. A lot of car tires don't exceed 50 PSI, same with trailers. So this is perfect for your car if your tire is under 65. And honestly, if you're, I wouldn't try to put it, you know, if it's right at 65, which I've not, not seen a tire right at 65, but as the tire heats up, it adds five, about five degrees. So 65 would be about 70 once it's been in operation. But for a standard car tire, these are great. Usually you don't put but 30, around 30 in a car tire or something, or a light truck. So I'm gonna get to the next va uh, valve stem I have. It is a TR600 and it even has a high pressure, it's an HP behind it. And I think it says A for high pressure application. Now these you will find in like three quarter ton trucks, eight lug trucks, uh, I don't know. I haven't been around a lot of semis, so I don't know what semis are running in dump trucks, but I'm just sticking with cars and trucks for this video and some equipment. But you'll see these in like, uh, oh, and I meant to tell you guys, I'm going to attach a, a diagram on the, the sizing as far as the TR12 to the TR15, so you, you know, so I'll attach that right here. And back to this, this valve, I put this valve in a lot of three quarter eight lug trucks because it is rated for 80 to 100 PSI, somewhere in that range. And I actually just went out and looked at my truck and it says max PSI is 80 on the tire. So that might be why there's a discrepancy on these. Um, uh, maybe a common load E range tire is 80 max, I don't know. 
So these are good for 80 to 100. And the reason why I like these is because these are a solid steel construction. So the brass or whatever it is goes all the way through the stem to the end. So you can see right here, I'll try to zoom in on this. Um, that main, that steel or, or brass goes all the way to the end of it and you can feel it. It's not squishy on the end as much as it does have some give because it has to, you know, slide in that rim. But on this one, it's just solid rubber there. So that is why these are considered a high pressure is because they're made of steel. They're not, the, the key thing is, is you don't want this valve blowing out. So say you have an ordinary 65 and you try to put it in an 80 PSI and you're running 80 PSI, guess what this is going to do? It's going to shoot out because it is made for 65 and under. This being 80, it's not going to shoot out. It's got a better design and it grips to the wheel better. That's why this is high pressure. Also, it can take more abuse. You know, if you're putting 100 PSI or 80 PSI in a tire, you don't want this thing blowing out on you because that would be an explosion almost. You know, that size of a hole, that's really going to force some air out and you're going to get, you know, it's going to be like a blowout real fast. That tire is just going to get flat and you won't know it and it blow out. Now, I will get to the, T the tire pressure monitoring system, TPMS. I'm still fairly new to this TPMS. I don't use it a lot. I start, try to stay away from it because I don't have the tools. I know you can get on like eBay and get those sensors that are pre-programmed for your car and you can get the tool, but I just haven't got into it yet. Um, I run a lot of older vehicles, so yeah, these newer, that's what I was going to go into, the, the newer TPMS, um, they have, and I'm going to attach a picture right here of a TPMS valve stem. They actually protrude, so you'd have like a valve stem and you'd see a piece of metal protrude out and then it comes with a, like a screw to fasten that sensor on there. And they're still called the same, you know, you'll still get a TR414, but I think there's something else extra to them, but you can still find them. You just have to be searching for TPMS valve stem and you can, you can find them pretty easy, but that's if you need a sensor and they make them for the high pressure application as well. So diesel trucks, you'll see the newer ones, they'll have the, the threaded, which these ones, neither of these do. They don't, this one will have like a threaded part two and uh, there's all variations I've seen of those. So yeah, you just have to find out, figure out what, what application you have. You might have to run to a tire shop, but um, yeah. So that's one thing about high pressure. Do not run a reputable shop and they try to throw car tire valve stems in your diesel truck, that's a big no-no. Take it back and get the right ones put in. They know better than that. So um, stay safe. And that's probably all the info I can give about the two. And the third one I want to talk about, I don't have it in my hand, but I'm gonna attach a picture right here. This is a steel valve stem. And I've seen several variations of steel valve stems. Some will have like a rubber washer, like you saw in the picture, there'll be two of them. One will go on the back of the rim and one will go on the top of the rim. And what happens is you tighten those nuts down and it seals the, the wheel that way and the opening for the valve stem. Now, I do not use these type of valve stems. I've gotten them on certain wheels that I've gotten in and like heavy equipment, but um, I try to stay away from them just because I don't like them for an everyday use because of the seals. Now those rubber washers, I feel like a lot, you get a hold of a lot of cheap rubber washers and then you're fighting the battle of those sealing and all the ones that I have gotten in are all leaking. But I've, I've not had one from the start installed new to know how long it takes for one of those to leak. But I just don't have any good reason to use them. I see them in a lot of off-road uh, steel wheels, and you'll see them in military applications, probably semis use them, I don't know. I'd consider them the ultimate valve stem and overkill for a, a daily driver because these valve stems, why they're so popular is because, well, they're made for high pressure and you're not gonna have to worry about that valve stem blowing out or cracking. 
a lot of times I see these valve stems, um, not this one in particular, but the car tires, you'll get them cracking to where you can literally just break it off and um, yeah, it snaps right off. So I think that is why um, the steel constructed valve stems are so popular in like army trucks, uh, off-road rigs, because you know, you think about it, you're in rough terrain and something could whack that valve stem and take it out. Now, if you have a steel one, your, your odds of it getting taken out are far less because it's just constructed much better and it's gonna take more abuse and it doesn't dry rot. Um, the only thing that will dry rot is those washers, but it's not gonna create a leak to where you can't get out of a situation. That valve stem, that's one thing about them. They won't leave you stranded. You could have that rubber seal fail all together and you just tighten from the outside, you would just tighten probably that nut down more and you could get out of the situation you're in by airing up that tire because the air is just not gonna go and just leak out real fast. Like versus one of these, if one of these just decided to snap off, this one in particular probably wouldn't, but a car tire, it would just snap off and just be a big open you know, leak and there's no fixing. There's no seal on that once that happens, so. Um, yeah, and those are the three, and I'll attach a picture of the steel one. If I didn't already, I'll attach a picture of the steel one to show you that. And yeah, I really hope that helps you out, guys. Just remember, car and light truck tires and wheels require um, these TR14s and TR12s, TR15s, TR or yeah, TR413s. They don't need the high pressure. You only need these for like diesel applications and the low to E low D, you know, the heavy hauling trucks, you will need these. Um, and the best way to tell the two apart is this will be solid rubber all the whole length of the stem and you'll see part of the brass on the high pressure ones. That's a big telltale to knowing the difference. And hopefully you guys don't wind up in a situation like this could be put in a car, but it'd be overkill, but you never want to see this in a diesel truck, a high load range tire. So if you do have it, just get it swapped out as soon as you can. Um, probably, it's probably illegal. But also wanted to show and share with you guys a quick tip, because I probably won't make a video on it. But you get into these fancy valve stem caps, and some of these can cause problems. You know the dice are real big. I even have an eight ball here. I have, I, I always save these off wheels I get. Um, but this is a, uh, this is a 44 mag. I think this was store-bought or it wasn't something custom-made. Some people make custom-made ones. So out of all these, I wanted to share with you, because hopefully this, if you're still watching, maybe you guys can get some good advice out of these. But <clears throat> So this old-school 8-ball one, I'll show you here. You can zoom in, and you can see it's all brass. Now, I can't say I've had one of these brass ones do it, but I will say these cheap chrome ones. Stay away from them. And anything, like, I had these ones that were grenades. I had to throw them away because they literally, I had to cut them off the tire. So these can trash your valve stems, especially if you're not taking them off every day. I don't know, maybe these valve stems were on here a year, the ones that I had to cut off, but they do have a rubber, a red rubber washer there on the end. That does not keep this thing from sticking. You need, like, some anises if you're going to use these and regularly like at least once a year be taking them off because the corrosion from salt and road, it will just, it will just lock on there. This is a steel cap, just chrome plated. It'll just lock on there and you will not get that thing off if it stays on there too long and it, you'll have to take all your valve stems out, take it to a shop. So hopefully you never get to that point. Oh, and also steel valve stems. I see those in a lot of heavy duty, um, like skid steers and tractors and stuff like that because those valve stems are just you know you can't you can't really tear them up you have to be really trying to tear those up hey and thanks for tuning in i hope this video helped you hope you got some good advice and stay tuned for the next video